Hi, Patricia. This is uh, my attempt to uh, show you how I would speak about this poster. I will cover much more information than you may have to tell uh, people who come up. And of course, the first thing people come up is you introduce yourself and then you say, um, please let me know if you have any questions. That's one possible approach. Another possible approach would be, uh, can I take you through my poster and what I did? And if um, they are interested in any particular thing, you can just tell them about that. But here we go with telling uh, somebody about the entire poster. And I'll see um, how this goes. So uh, first off, so uh, we're doing frugal science. And uh, the title of our poster is Frugal Science, Partial Molar Volumes of Binary Solutions uh, Based on Simple Measurements. Now, frugal science is an idea that has uh, people doing science all over the world um, and as inexpensively as possible. And it takes uh, things that people usually do that are more expensive and it strips it down so that we're still doing and doing it well, uh, at least that's the attempt, and we think we are, um, but that uh, for significantly cheaper. And that has applications because People all over the world can then do this science um, and create new scientists, give more people the opportunity to do science. Now, um, we'll be measuring partial molar volumes, um, and uh, those are important in industry based on the fact that if you take 50 milliliters of, say, water, and you add it to 50 milliliters of ethanol, you do not get 100 milliliters of solution. You actually get slightly less. You get about 96.40 milliliters of solution. And that difference is very important if you're making products like hand sanitizer or vodka that you sell by the volume. Uh, you would hate to say that you have one pint of vodka or hand sanitizer, and then somebody measures it and finds out that you actually have a little less than that pint. That would not be good. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, measure partial molar volume um, and changes in partial molar volume. Now, before I say more, let's talk about what is the partial molar volume. And we'll start by talking about molar volume. And that is literally the volume of one mole of substance. And um, well, what is a mole? Well, a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd uh, atoms or molecules or ions. Uh, it's a specific number. It's Avogadro's number. Perhaps you've heard of it. Um, if you haven't, um, then if you ever take a chemistry class, it is one of the most important concepts we have. And, um, and so the volume of one mole of, say, water is given down here. It is 18.1 milliliters per mole. Uh, and what happens, though, is when you take some water and you pour it into some a big container of some other fluid, it doesn't take the same amount of uh, volume. And now, because it's mixed, it takes part of the volume, and that's why it's called partial molar volume. And it turns out that if you do this with water in 2-propanol, it only takes up 14.5 milliliters per mole, 20% smaller volume, which is a, a big deal. Um, and uh, again, this is, this is what we want to measure so that we know when you mix two substances together, what are the partial molar volumes, the volumes of each of them when mixed together. Now, um, our measurements involve a jeweler's scale, which you can get from Amazon for about 12 or $13, even with all the inflation that we've had. Uh, a 25.00 milliliter volumetric flask, which is again about 12 or $13. And uh, uh, we'll use several plastic pipettes, but you know, one for each type of measurement. Um, and you can get a thousand of those probably for 12 or 13 bucks. And uh, all of these 
are things that most, uh, or all community colleges that I know of, most high schools um, and uh, or ha also have, and it would be inexpensive for somebody to get to do these experiments at home. Um, we have a collaboration with a group in Jamaica. They also have these things. They could do these measurements, and they will be doing these measurements. Now let's talk about data collection. Data collection is also relatively simple. You take the mass of a beaker, you add some 2-propanol, take the mass of that, subtract the 2, you get the mass of 2-propanol, add some water to that until it gets to the mark on the neck of the graduated cylinder, such that the meniscus, the bottom of the meniscus, sits right on that mark. And then you record the mass of the uh, beaker plus 2-propanol plus water. And then you subtract and you can get the mass of the water. And from the mass of the water, you can get the moles of water using the molar mass. And then we're up here doing some calculations. Um, and for calculations, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the molar volume of the solution. And the way in which you do that is you have to get the molar mass of uh, the solution, the mixture. And you take the mole fraction of each of the parts, so mole fraction of, say, 2-propanol. And the mole fraction of the water is just 1 minus the mole fraction of 2-propanol. Since there's only two things, whatever fraction is 2-propanol, the rest of it has to be water. And you need the molar masses of each of those two things. You get what amounts to an average molar mass. You divide that by the density, which is just mass over volume. And what we've got here in figure one is a plot of molar volume of our solution versus mole fraction of 2-propanol. And I should say what 2-propanol is, by the way. 2-propanol is an alcohol with three carbons, and attached to the middle carbon is an alcohol group, an OH group. And we could draw the Lewis structure for this. Remember, carbon, each carbon has four bonds, and you fill in the bonds that you don't have already to other things with hydrogen. And so, and then oxygen has two pairs of electrons on it, typically, and two bonds. And so this is 2-propanol. And the 2 comes about because we name the two, uh, the, or sorry, we don't name them, we number the carbons. Uh, one, two, three. And so 2-propanol has it on the number two carbon, the alcohol group. But that's, uh, and we're doing 2-propanol water solution. Think that's something that's been done before so we can compare it to literature values. And in this plot, the green dots are our data. And the black line is a line that goes straight from pure water to pure 2-propanol. And though it's hard to see, our data is below it. And it is very, it is close to what is seen. Um, and our, uh, this is proof that our measurement technique works. Okay. Uh, now we're going to replot this data. And when we replot it, we're going to plot it as the difference between our data points and this line. And when we do that, that's figure two down here. And in figure two, the green circles, filled green circles, are again our data. And this time you can see that uh, the difference, really this is the difference between the black line and our green dots. And we call that the excess molar volume. That's why we're plotting the excess molar volume for our two solutions, again, versus the same x-axis. Much easier to see, much easier to analyze. And from there, what we're going to do is we're going to get the partial molar volume or the change in partial molar volume for each of the substances. We draw a best fit line or best fit line through the data. That's this black line. And then uh, at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way out to 0 0.9 and 1, we're going to draw a tangent line 
as best as we can. And I'm showing this on Excel, but we actually uh, can do all of our work without a computer just by uh, doing the calculations ourselves and graphing it. And we actually did do the graphical analysis by hand, uh, just so you know. Though I'm showing us the uh, approximation of it using the tangent line in this chart on Excel. Anyway, you do this, uh, you draw this uh, tangent line, and then where it hits the x equals zero line, that's the y-axis, that's going to be the change in molar volume of the water because the molar fraction is zero of two propanol, so that's pure water. And we get about 0.2. And if we take this line and extend it all the way over to the y-axis or where x equals one, that's pure 2-propanol, and you can estimate the change in the molar volume of the 2-propanol. And I've got some details about this on here. Uh, for number five here, we actually uh, figured out the equation of this line and solved for where uh, x equals 1, actually being the mole fraction, to find those values. And then we plotted them in figure three. In figure three, we've got the change in the molar volume. These are decreases in molar volume. That's why we've got negative numbers over here. As a uh, uh, function or versus, again, the molar fraction of 2-propanol. And uh, when we do that, we get um, Uh, we see that our data is the circle, the green is 2-propanol, and the uh, orange is water. And as we go, and the solid lines are actual literature values. So what we can see is that we are able to 90% uh, of, I think I figured this out now, there we go. 90% of the change, like right here, 90% of the change we can do for the change in the partial molar volume of water. So we can do 73% based on this point right here for the change in the partial molar volume of 2-propanol, which we would say is good, it's not perfect. Um, and we do have some ideas on how to improve our measurements, uh, one of which is to account for temperature effects, which we haven't done yet. And the other is to uh, calibrate our 25.00 milliliter volumetric flask uh, so that we uh, can make sure it's 25.00 milliliters. And we, in preliminary tests, we have some ideas that this will help us get even closer to the correct value. And here, uh, it's not really part of our work, but I did uh, have a section on what does the value of, uh, a negative value of the change in molar volume mean. It means that due to structure in the mixture, in the solution, the structure is groupings of molecules instead of straight mixtures. And that can lead, and this is uh, what these authors say in reference number three, it can lead to smaller volumes than uh, you would think if you just mixed them. Um, and so that's what a negative value means. It means that the solution has less volume and um, these are computational calculations or simulations. In conclusion, we have estimated the changes in the partial molar volumes of each component of a binary solution using simple equipment, simpler than um, usually is done. Usually they use something called a, uh, uh, what's the name, a pycnometer. Um, they use a hot water bath as well. And they use a scale that has many more, or at least two more digits, two more significant figures than ours. Number two, our experiments do a good job, though not perfect, at com when we compare our values to literature. And uh, our experiment is a new tool in the frugal science tool belt that can be used and is highly accessible to many people who would like to try these types of experiments. And future work, includes um, trying other systems, other binary solutions to see what happens.
And that's more or less how I would talk about this poster. Uh, good.